when you look back on your life so far, when have been the times that you have learnt the most, that your education has deepened the most? Has it been when your life has been going quite easily, when you're not being very stretched, when you're living nicely in your comfort zone? Or has it been when you've been going through quite a difficult patch, when you're feeling really stretched beyond your limits and when you are a very long way outside your comfort zone. A key way that we deepen our education is through getting ourselves out of our comfort zone. Some years back, I went on a very long bicycle ride across the world. For about three years, I rode my bicycle across the world. And for much of those three years, I was very far outside my comfort zone. And I was also learning a lot. I learned a lot about the world. I learned a lot about humanity. And I learned a lot about myself. And this morning, I'm going to tell you briefly about one small section of that bicycle expedition and reflect on some of the things that I learnt during that time. And just to set this in context, to explain the, the whole trip, what I did, I was living in England at the time, and I'd just left my job as a geography teacher and decided I wanted to go and explore the world on my bicycle. But rather than setting off from London and cycling into the world, I thought it would be more fun if I flew as far away from home as possible and then tried to cycle back again. So that's what I did. I flew to northeast Russia, got off the plane with my bike, started cycling, and over the first year or so, I cycled down, if you can just see that little red line, cycled down through Russia, then down through Japan, and then down through, up through South Korea, down through China, and I reached Hong Kong. So that was the first year of my journey, getting myself to Hong Kong. From Hong Kong, I decided I was going to take a little detour going south down to Australia. But I had a problem because there was a lot of water to get across on the way to Australia. <laughs> Couldn't ride my bike there. And it, although it, it might have been very sensible to jump on a plane and fly to Australia like most people did. It just felt a bit like cheating to jump on a plane in the middle of the trip. So I thought, I'm not going to fly, um, but I can't ride my bicycle. How can I get to Australia? I'm going to have to hitchhike on boats. So first of all, I hitchhiked on a yacht. I managed to find a yacht from over in Hebe Haven Yacht Club in Sai Kung across to the Philippines, cycled through the Philippines. Then I found a cargo ship going from the Philippines down to Indonesia. And then I did find a ferry heading heading across towards the island of New Guinea. And I was going to now go through the exotic land of Papua New Guinea, which is what I shall tell you about now. Well, that was my first sighting of New Guinea. I didn't know a lot about the place. It looked very mysterious, quite uh, frightening in a way. It was just covered in jungles and clouds and mountains. And as I cycled along throughout my expedition, I did quite a lot of research trying to find out not just what the guidebook said, but trying to find out firsthand what other people who live in the places I was going to said about those places. And I would stop off in internet cafes and send emails to all my friends and my friends of friends and my friends of friends and friends. And I'd ask everybody I could find out, what is this next country I'm about to go through like? And sometimes I would get replies. And just before I got to Papua New Guinea, I got a reply from a friend of a friend. And this is what he said. Uh, I should warn you that travel in PNG, Papua New Guinea, can be quite dangerous. I've been held at gunpoint and robbed 16 times <laughs> and have been caught in crossfire from warring tribes using M16s and the like. I don't mean to be negative, but I'm sure you would want to make informed decisions on where you travel. Well, to put it mildly, I was now out of my comfort zone in quite an extreme way. And I knew I was going to learn a lot if I managed to make it through Papua New Guinea in one piece. So I said a prayer. I took my courage in both hands and I headed towards the border, across the Indonesian border and into the jungles of Papua New Guinea. For the first few days, well, the first day the road was quite good. The second day the road turned into a muddy road. The third day the road turned into a little track through the jungle. There were no maps, there were no road signs. 
I was terrified. I heard all these strange sounds, hissing and buzzing and strange chirping noises coming out of the jungle. I thought, maybe I'm just going to get lost in here. Nobody will ever see me again. But then I came down a hill. I came to this river. There were all these houses on stilts next to the river. And these two guys stepped out from behind a house. One of them at the time was holding a big bow. The other one had a baseball cap on. And they said, why don't you come and stay in our house tonight? And I thought, said, thank you so much. So I went into the house. That is Yagi on the left-hand side and his cousin Anderson on the right. And they took very good care of me. They cooked me bananas and plantains on the fire for dinner. And actually, one of the greatest things I learned on this three-year expedition is that there are a lot of very kind people in the world. I found everywhere I went, from Russia to Australia to Afghanistan, almost everywhere I went, almost everybody I met was kind and helpful. Helpful. I did occasionally meet less friendly people. I did get robbed a couple of times on the way and so on. But 99% of the people were actually surprisingly friendly. And that was a really good lesson for me to learn. Well, as I was having dinner with Yagi and Anderson, and I was explaining to them how frightened I was that I was going to get lost. And they said to me, look, Rob, tomorrow when you set off, why don't we come with you? We will walk with you. We will show you a route out of the jungle to back to the sea, to the coast. And next to the sea, there is a road. We call it the beach road. You can follow the beach road all the way to the next town. You won't get lost. Why don't we show you the way? And I thought, well, that's a great idea. Thank you very much. So the next day, we set off walking together. It was great to have company again. I don't know if you can see in Yagi's right hand, he's got an enormous knife. And so I felt a little bit safe. Now I was with Yagi and his knife. And we walked for about a day and we finally broke out of the jungle. We made it to the beach road. I was so happy to reach this beach road. It was a beautiful beach. The only trouble was it was not a road. It was just a beach. And so I just had to start pushing my bike through the sand very slow. I don't know if you've ever, ever tried to ride a bicycle on a beach. It's not really possible. So I was pushing my bike about one mile an hour. All sorts of obstacles started to come up before me now. Sometimes there were rivers. I had to balance my bike on a canoe, ask somebody to kindly paddle me across. Sometimes there were inlets from the sea. I had to take all the bags off my bike, carry it over my head through the sea, hoping that a wave wouldn't knock me over. Sometimes there were shallow rivers, and I just had to walk through quickly, hoping there weren't too many crocodiles around. I was still very far outside of my comfort zone. And then I made it as far as I could along the north coast of Papua New Guinea. Then I had to cross the middle of the island, which is basically lots of big mountains, um, to get to the south coast of Papua New Guinea. And I met some new friends. That's John on the left, and then that's Tom just standing beside me. And John and Tom said they'd show me a route through the mountains. So we set off walking. Uh, they helped me carry some of my stuff up into the mountains. You can see the clouds are beginning to roll in and rainy season is about to arrive. And uh, as we went forwards, we found now the biggest problem was that the rivers were starting to flood and there was no way we could walk through these rivers. We'd be swept away and drowned. No way that we could canoe across them. We'd be swept away and drowned. And it began to become very desperate. And we even started running out of food because we'd get all these rivers were rising around us. We were getting trapped. We had to retrace our steps, get more food. And to be honest, at this point of the journey, I was getting so, um, so down about this situation. I'd been now on the road for one and a half years. I was running out of money. I was tired. I was hungry. I was feeling a bit ill. I later found out I'd caught malaria, but I didn't know it at this point. And I was just, everything was going wrong. And I started thinking to myself, maybe I should just retrace my steps back to the last city I was in, and I'll find a plane, and I'll fly home to England. I've had enough of this stupid bike ride. That was basically what I was thinking. But then I thought to myself, how will I feel if I fly home now? Um, you know, for a few days, I can eat lots of pizzas, have lots of hot showers, see all my friends and family. That will be great. But after a few days, I know I will regret that for the rest of my life for basically for, for wimping out and 
just escaping from this uncomfortable situation. I would regret that probably forever. So I have to stay in this uncomfortable place. I have to stay in this place where I'm being stretched and I'm out of my comfort zone, see what I can learn and keep on moving forwards. And hopefully I will get through and I will learn a lot as I go. And we kept on going. Eventually that river, we did find a a way to get across it, just a, a tree which had fallen across. We had to quickly scamper across it. And after two weeks in the mountains, we made it out the other side. You can see me there. My shirt is ripped. My beard is long. My hair's a mess. I was dirty and tired and hungry, but I felt great. I felt absolutely, you know, very, very happy. And uh, I made it down to Port Moresby. I managed to, again, this was getting out of my comfort zone, trying to find a final boat to get me to Australia. Um, And I only had a few weeks left on my visa. And I'm quite a shy person, naturally. But I knew if I um, was going to find a boat, I would have to talk to everybody I could in the city to try and find a boat. So I went to see the yacht club manager. And he said, uh, we're sorry, it's typhoon season, no boats for six months. So then I went to all the shipping companies. They said, we'd love to give you a ride, but we're not allowed to. There's too many rules. And then I went to see the British ambassador. He said, he was very nice, but he said, I can't offer you a boat ride. And I talked to everybody I could. I even went on Papua New Guinean TV and I said, can I find a boat? Um, uh, I talked on the news show and nobody got in touch with me, but I talked to more and more people. And eventually I was actually invited to one of the local international schools to give a talk um, to to the kids because the the teachers thought it would be interesting for the children. And at the end of the talk, I said, by the way, everybody, I'm looking for a boat in case you can help. And then I went back to the house I was staying in. The next day, the teacher rang me up and she said, little Ashley in the second row, his uncle has got a luxury dive boat and is going to Australia tomorrow. Would you like a ride? And I said, you bet I would. And so that was how I found my lift to Australia. Again, totally out of my comfort zone, pushing myself beyond those boundaries of of shyness. And I found my boat to Australia. Just quickly to sum up what happened from there, I cycled around Australia, back up through Asia, back up through places like Tibet, Uh, There's Mount Everest in the distance there, through a few very out of my comfort zone places like Afghanistan, and finally back to London. And there's going past Big Ben up to my house, and I made it home. And I love this quote here. Sometimes when I consider what tremendous consequences come from little things, I'm tempted to think there are no little things. And what did I learn on this journey? Well, it's too much to say, really. But even in that short stretch in Papua New Guinea, you can see I learned a lot about humanity. I learned a lot about core values that we all need to remember. Perseverance, just going forward and and letting our brains figure out the solutions as we encounter problems. Um, Things like the power of networking, of meeting a lot of people, of just being brave enough to go and say hello to people. I learned so much and much, much more, a lot about my own strengths and my own weaknesses, which have really helped me in other areas of life. So to return to my early point, a key way in which we deepen our education is through putting ourselves outside our comfort zones. And I'm not saying you all have to get on a bicycle and ride across the world for a few years, or even that you have to put your child on a bicycle and send them (laughs) off across the world for a few years. But I am saying we need to intentionally think of ways every year, ideally, that we can really put ourselves out of our comfort zones, and we can model that to our young people and show them that it can actually be a lot of fun, we can learn a lot, we can learn to love learning through doing those kinds of things. And there are even bonuses that come from putting ourselves out of our comfort zones. Uh, In the middle of this bicycle ride, actually, as I was cycling through Hong Kong, I met a girl and I stayed in touch with her. She was working in London when I got back, and so I married her. So (laughs) I even found my wife through putting myself... Thank you. Through putting myself out of my comfort zone. So... In conclusion, school's out. It's the school holiday starting this summer. 
Think of ways you can put yourself out of your comfort zone, maybe even your family. Together you can get out of your comfort zone, maybe go camping instead of staying in a hotel for a couple of days. Um, Learn to enjoy that and just enjoy how much you will learn as you get out of your comfort zones. Thank you very much. (laughs) 